Hello and welcome to an overview of steps to take when migrating Operations Manager 5.8 environments to vRealize Operations Manager 6. Please refer to the vRealize Operations Manager documentation and release notes to review important prerequisites and sizing guidelines before attempting a migration in your environment. There are many migration scenarios that are possible depending on your existing environment. A simple scenario could be migrating a single vCenter Operations Manager 5.a v app to a single vRealize Operations Manager version 6 node. More complex scenarios are also possible, such as consolidating multiple vCenter Operations Manager v apps into a single vRealize Operations Manager environment, or migrating from a Windows or Linux installable version of vCenter Operations Manager to a vRealize Virtual Appliance platform. In this video, we'll cover two simple migration scenarios. Migrations can be initiated during a setup of a new vRealize environment, or also at any time in a currently running environment. Let's start with the new environment scenario, then cover migration to a running environment later. Here, we have the initial login screen of a newly deployed vRealize Operations Manager node. We're logging into the environment for the very first time, so we're presented with options to configure a new environment or to import an environment. The New Environment option is for starting fresh and connecting to sources that have not been monitored previously with Operations Manager. Today, we'll choose Import Environment to migrate data from vCenter Operations Manager. Once selected, the images below show the import flow from selecting the data source, installing solutions, and migrating data. We'll scan the End User License Agreement and accept the terms. We'll run in the Product Evaluation mode where no license key is required. Now, we are prompted to select a vCenter Operations Manager 5.8.x environment as the source for the data migration. We'll enter the IP address of the source UIVM along with the administrator password. Then click Add Source. The prompt indicates to us that it will take a few minutes to install a migration agent on the source system. This agent is then removed when the migration is complete. We'll accept the certificate from the source system then wait as calculations are run to determine the size of the source data. As the calculations complete, we'll see the number of objects and metrics to be migrated and the amount of disk, CPU, and memory that they will consume in the vRealize environment when the migration is complete. Here we have the option to choose one of two migration modes, configuration and data, or only configuration. Configuration and data will bring in the resources along with their historical data. Configuration only will migrate the configuration data and start monitoring those resources from this point forward, rather than bring any historical data. In our case, let's select configuration and data. The graphs along the bottom indicate we have plenty of headroom to migrate the source data, so we'll click Next to continue. Here, we are presented with a list of solutions or management packs that exist in the source environment, and the status of the same solution in the target environment. If we want to migrate solution data, we'll need to make sure that the solution is installed in the target environment before starting the migration. We can see that the vCenter adapter is already installed by default in our target vRealize environment, but all other solutions are missing. Now we do want to migrate the EMC data for this example, so let's install that solution before we continue with the migration. To do that, we'll click Add Solution, then browse to the EMC solution pack file. We would choose the Force Installation option if we had a previous version of the EMC solution installed in our environment that we wanted to overwrite. Since this is a brand new installation with no previous solutions installed, we don't need to select Force Install. We'll upload the file and then click Next. Scan the license agreement and accept the terms, then watch as the solution is installed. If we had a multi-node vRealize Operations Manager cluster, we would see the solution files being installed on all nodes in the cluster, so that any of them could be selected to host an adapter instance. As the installation completes, we click Finish, and we'll see the EMC adapter now has a status of installed, along with the vCenter adapter. For this demonstration, those are the only two solutions we wish to migrate, so let's continue without installing any other solutions. Let's click Next, and we'll receive a warning that the data from missing solutions will not be migrated and cannot be imported after a migration has already been run. We have the solutions installed that we wish to migrate, so we'll click Yes to continue, and then click Finish to start the migration. Here at the Import Status screen, we'll get continuous updates on the progress of the migration and the estimated time remaining. 
If we highlight a migration task, we'll see the modules below that are being imported. We can move away from this screen to other parts of the user interface, and the migration process will not be interrupted. Now that the migration is finished, our status line shows the elapsed time that it took to complete. If we click on the import source, we can see a breakout of the components that were migrated. Now clicking over to the Solutions tab, we can see the adapter instances that were migrated along with collection information. The vCenter adapter instance name shows the source IP that it was migrated from, and the status shows collecting and receiving data. When we click the EMC adapter, we can see three instances that were migrated, and their status also shows collecting and receiving data. These instances were all automatically configured during the migration, and then started collecting when the migration was complete. Now, we have a running vRealize Operations Manager environment that is actively collecting data with the vSphere and EMC adapter solutions. Now let's look at another migration scenario where we can import data into a vRealize environment that's already running and collecting data. Let's switch back to the Import Data tab and click the Import Data button. We can see the familiar screen that asks for import source and credentials. Let's enter the source IP address for a different 5.8.x environment than we used from the first migration. We'll enter the admin password, then click Add Source. Once again, we're told that an agent will be installed on the source. We click OK, accept the certificate, and then wait for the size of the source data to be calculated. Now that the migration data size has been calculated, we can see plenty of headroom to import the objects from the second source into the same environment where we imported the first migration. Once again, we'll leave the default mode of configuration and data migration to import the adapter solutions with their historical data. As we click Next, we're again prompted with a list of installed solutions on the source and those that are installed are missing in our vRealize Operations Manager target environment. In this migration, we'll just import the vCenter adapter, but none of the other solutions that exist on the source. We'll click Next, and we're warned that no data or objects will be migrated for adapters that are missing on the target. We're OK with this, so click Yes, and then Finish. The migration begins, and we can watch the elapsed time and estimated time to remain here on the Data Import Status screen. Once again, we can also highlight the migration task that's underway and watch the various stages of component migrations in the area below. As before, we're free to move around in the product UI without disrupting the migration that's underway. Now we can see the second migration is complete. Flipping over to the Solutions tab, we see a new vCenter adapter instance that's been automatically created, and it's collecting and receiving data. And in the name of the second instance, we can see that it came from a different source IP than the first vCenter adapter. We've now completed three migration scenarios, an import into a brand new vRealize Operations Manager environment, import into a vRealize environment that was already collecting data, and a consolidation migration where we imported data from two separate vCenter Operations Manager installations into a single vRealize Operations Manager environment. As we mentioned earlier, please review the vRealize Operations Manager documentation and checklists before performing migrations in your environment. For more information on vRealize Operations, please visit vmware.com go vrops. Thank you.